Hello lads and lasses and welcome to something I find very exciting. I've started a series called Prehistory Profile. This series will be used to share knowledge about prehistoric animals of all kinds, with a focus on the more obscure and lesser known animals. But I might do an episode on something more well known. We'll just see. Hope you enjoy this. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Time, but I finally got another chance to do it, so that's good. <laughs> Anyways, today's episode will be on a creature that is getting some attention lately. Well, sort of. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. This is Prehistory Profile, Alter Spine Eggs. Alter Spine Eggs is known from the Weldon Supergroup, a multi layer series of geological formations from southern England in what's now eastern Sussex. Or just East Sussex. It lived in the early Cretaceous during the Melanginian 140 to 133 million years ago, early around that time. It lived with several other prehistoric animals such as the Ankylosaurid, Pileosaurus, the Spinosaurid, Sucosaurus, the Iguanodont Barillium, and the Pterosaur, oh god, let's see if I can pronounce this, Coloborhynchus. I am pretty sure that's how you say that name but do correct me if i am wrong i'm not a pterosaur expert alter spinex was discovered as previously mentioned in southern england in 1855 by samuel beckles whilst he was prospecting the fossils in the area he found three vertebrae of some sort of animal and it had unusually tall dorsal spine in 1856, paleontologist Sir Richard Owen, the man who famously named the Dinosauria clay, referred the material to the animal Megalosaurus Bucklandi, also well known as the first dinosaur ever scientifically described, and also famously known as a Wastebacks taxon, meaning that it is a genus in which several, several other animals were assigned to of uh, really thinking a second thought, similar to what happened with Troodon. The material stayed as Megalosaurus Buckwandi for over 30 years until 1888, where Richard Leidecker compared a tooth he had obtained in Germany to the three vertebrae and decided to give it its own species name of Megalosaurus Dunkerai. Even later on, in 1923, Frederick von Huhn, a German paleontologist, once again assigned it to something new, but this time its own genius, giving it the name Altospinex dunkerai. Altospinex meaning the with high spines, as a reference to, to its tall spines. This name was used for the first time by German paleontologist Oscar Kuhn in 1939, well, officially used, I should probably mention this. This, people were satisfied with this name for a long time, and it stuck, but it did go through some revisions over the years. In 1888, Gregory S. Paul assigned the material to a species of Acrocanthosaurus. He wasn't exactly confident with this classification of Acrocanthosaurus, and why he put a question mark at the end of the name. Because of this, in 1991, the material and all the name stuff and all that were assigned into one new genus given the name Beckelspinax, which is named Beckelspinax Altospinax. It was given this name in honor of its discoverer, Samuel Beckles, a man, as I mentioned earlier, who found the free vertebrae whilst prospecting on in southern England. This name stuck for a bit, but eventually in 2016, the material was assigned back as Altospinax dunkeri and Beckelspinax became a junior synonym. Altospinax is often depicted as similar looking to concavenator, an animal that I think has been getting more popular recently, mainly thanks to the its appearance as a statue in Dress of the Fallen Kingdom and appearance in the subsequent game and other toys and whatnot. Anyway, it is unknown whether Altospinax has anything like this. But it's the most common depiction thanks to it having a spine similar to concavenator. 
it is also generally believed to be carnivorous, but thanks once again to those three vertebrae, um, it's unknown whether it would actually had that lifestyle of being a carnivore. It might not have even been a theropod. Now, as for what I was talking about earlier about how I feel that Autospinax is getting some attention lately, sort of, that's because it is appearing in the upcoming Netflix animated series, Jurassic World Chaos Family, under its name Becklespinax, hence why it's sort of appearing. I quite like this, I'm looking forward to the show, and it's cool to see an animal like that. It's new to the Jurassic Park canon, and it'll be fun to see. I don't know how accurate that design would realistically be. It looks a bit like a megalosaurus. Makes sense since the old Spinax was originally classed as a megalosaurus, but whatever. It's a cool design though, I like the coloration. And who knows? Maybe Alter Spinax or yes, Beckle Spinax will become a household name because of the show. Probably not, but we'll see. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Prehistory Profile as much as I did making it. If you can't tell, this is very inspired by the YouTuber Trey the Explainer and his old Paleo Profile series, hence the name. I definitely try and differentiate it more and make more episodes for this series, but for now, this is going to be the form I'm going with. Also, I'm sorry if my voice sounded a bit weird and the way I was talking. This is my first time really doing any recording. Anyways, I hope you lovely people have a nice day, and the next profile will be on a small animal that was part of a big discovery. Goodbye. <laughs>